What do you got there? Let's uh, see what we got here. That's uh, that's from Gil, our friend Gil. Jim in Stockholm. He went on a trip recently, I think, to, to, he's a carpet dealer now. Thinking of you, Gil. That's nice of him to think, like, not very nice that he didn't send a postcard, but get my response ready here. Gil. Nice to hear from you. How, how's tricks? Your friend, your friend, Jim Dupree. Okay. Now a lot of people, a lot of people would get this and they would say, well, why don't you just send them an email? Why don't you, why don't you send them an SMS text message? But, uh, you know, think about, think about all the petrochemicals that those things use. Think about, you know, the radio waves. Think about, think about all those harmful things for the environment. Like how much gas are you burning uh, sending a text message? Quite a lot. That's putting a big hole in our environmental uh, protection layer. So what I like to do is, uh, you know, write it up like that, cruelty free, you know, give it a good huff, and then wait four to six business days. You know, some of the, the most important messages in history have been delivered um, in a bottle. And people, I think, forget about that these days. They're so wrapped up in the new technologies. But, uh, you know, like 1967, lunar landing. First time man sets foot upon the lunar surface. Tom Hanks sends that message down, throws it, and the gravity, because there's not a lot of gravity up on the moon, it just goes, and then the Earth's gravity picks it up plop into the water, they get down to Houston, Kennedy Space Center, they unroll this thing. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. And we had to go out to the coast to get it, and it landed in the water because 75% of the Earth's surface is covered in water. So it's, you know, a fairly uh, efficient means of transmission. This is, I come down here probably two or three times a week just to, uh, to you know, check my mail. And here we go. Nice, the big jars are good because you can also send. Okay. Okay, one of the one of the problems with sharing um, sharing a piece of coastline like this, a lot of people come down here to check their messages. Like, look how many. Right. So when you when you have this many people sharing a beach, sometimes the wires get crossed and you end up with somebody else's mail. Right. Like, I do not know Ahmed, and I do not have any business dealings with him. Hello, friend. So. You know, message um, that sort of chilled the world was delivered by bottle. Do you remember when, uh, in the early 70s, JFK was shot? Remember that? I, I well, I, sort of. And they shut everything down. They stopped everything. They stopped all the newspapers, all the television broadcasts to deliver the message. And the message was actually delivered to every home in America in a bottle. The milk, uh, the milkman brought it. Every doorstep in America had a bottle with a note. You open it up, 
the president has been shot. And the, uh, you know, those who are not that patriotic uh, were a little miffed. They said, uh, you know, how, how, what am I going to put on my Weetabix? I can't put this, I can't put this death notice on my Weetabix. It'll be dry. Okay, now here's a good example. If you're unsure of who sent you something, don't open anything with an attachment, you know? Because you could get a virus from it. Like, I don't know who sent this to me. But I'm not going to open it. Like, who knows what that, who knows what's in that attachment? You know, in, in the early days, in the very early days of the Academy Awards, the Oscar ceremony would be held uh, not in a, in a large studio, but in fact on the beach in California. And, uh, and they were waiting for the results to come in from a small island off the coast of Costa Rica. They would deliver uh, the list of award winners in a bottle but they would all come individually. All the different categories would have their own bottle. So it took a long time. People would be waiting on the beach for, you know, two, three, four weeks, sometimes six, six weeks. And uh, what would happen is, is one would wash up on the shore and all the celebrities would gather around and they'd pick it up out of the water and they'd smash it open. And often um, the glass was a lot stronger then, so it would, it would uh, like cut their hands up pretty badly. And several celebrities actually lost all, uh, all of their abilities to manipulate their digits because their tendons would be sliced open. So they would read the winner and everyone would applaud and, and once um, Marlon Brando said, well, you know, that, it's nice that I won this award, that I've got this recognition from my peers, but uh, do I get anything? Because this was before they had the statues. And uh, the presenter, who I believe is Billy Crystal, uh, had, had cut his tendons quite badly and was bleeding everywhere. And he picked up a piece of glass and, he, and Billy Crystal said to, to Marlon Brando, do you want me to cut you with this? Do you want me to cut you with this? Because I, I will cut your throat. And that part didn't make it into the broadcast. The waves are coming in pretty hard. And when it's like this, you gotta have a really keen eye. Because there's stuff just the stuff like this that you're liable to miss if you're not paying close attention. All right, that could have been lost forever. So what does it what does it say? It's from my wife. It's uh, it's time for dinner. Oh, I I, I guess you're gonna have to go go home for, for dinner then I guess. It smells like her. Well, aren't you going to go home? My wife's been dead for 15 years. 